Good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are in the world, like my co-host today, uh, Miss Sunday Love, all the way from Japan. I can't believe she's staying up late to do this. But it is July uh, 17th, and we are talking America's Next Top Model, Cycle 13, lucky number 13, which was the short cycle, as so many of you have remembered. Uh, and by the way, thank you so much for all your questions. There were so many questions to go through. I know how much you guys love Sunday. And uh, again, I'm so glad that she's joining us. I'm just gonna check down here below, see if she's here already. Uh, there she is. Miss Sunday. It's connecting, connecting. Let's see if we can hear. Hello. Mr. J. Hi, I'm gonna turn up my sound a little bit. Can you hear me fine? Yeah, it's a little low, hold on. There we go. That's my dog in the background. They heard me going, yay, Sunday. They think I'm talking to them. <laughs> they know I love animals. <laughs> okay, so tell everybody, first of all, you're in Tokyo right now. I got, in Tokyo, right? Yes, that's right. And so that would mean it's 1 a.m. for you. <laughs> it's Saturday. It's, it is 1 a.m. and I have on eyelashes and a Red Bull and I don't even know what's going on right now. Yes, I love that. And by the way, everyone <laughs> should definitely... I love going through your Instagram. You serve every pose. And like I said to you, the eyebrows are laid. I'm not mad. You get 100% on the brow, girl. You are too sweet. I know you ain't talking looking fabulous. I was like, should I, should I put on some lashes for this? I think I need to. <laughs> oh, but I love it. Lashes at 1 a.m. Can I tell you, first of all, I was like racing this morning, going through the questions for you from all the fans. Look at all the mm -hmm. people down below. They're going, hey, from Philippines. Everybody, I love this. <laughs> so if you guys, for, for those people who are tuning in, who didn't see Cycle 13, just so you all know, Miss Sunday Love was one of the fan favorites from that oh. cycle. It was this short cycle. And, and we, we determined this right in the casting. You were technically the shortest girl in the group, weren't you? Yeah, and I actually did not know that until I actually <laughs> got there. And like, I think it was like Rachel. I think she was like, "I'm five foot four. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> and so, and so, you are for all those who don't know. I'm five foot three. Five foot three. And wasn't there like a quarter inch or something we were holding on to or something like that? I kept with the half, but I think that was a lie. I'm pretty sure I'm just five foot three. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But um, so the, the fan questions, there were so many questions for you. This was another cycle where a lot was going on. And, I, and, and actually, for people who remember the news cycle at the time, and for those who probably don't remember those type of things but us, um, when this <laughs> cycle went into casting and it was announced they're doing a five foot and under cycle, People, crazy. crazy. And I remember all over the news in New York City, especially yes. the play, the open call casting, they literally, it was like 10,000 girls. Right? Packed. Yeah. They were knocking over stanchions to get in. It was I remember. <laughs> insanity. They wanted this, yeah. this five, seven and under cycle, which, you know, I've got to give hats off to Tyra for, for one thing, because one of the things she said in the cycle, which is so true, and there are several questions for you. I'm going to dive into them right now. But one of the things is, you know, girls come up to me all the time on the street, gorgeous girls, and guys too, and go, oh my God, I want to be a model. Can I be a model? Stunning and with personality and everything. And I always keep it 100 with them. I'll say, okay, you know what? You're about, what, 5'5"? Five, five? And they were like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So you're never going to walk a major runway. You know, I don't think that'll change. However, People forget there's commercial modeling. I said, you could sell yeah, Tide, toothpaste, man. Crest White Strips, you target commercials. And I said, with that, you know, if you've got the face, the personality, even the body, and you can, you can make it work as a petite model. Yeah, that's so, very, very true. And I like how upfront she was about everything. <laughs> yeah, and there were so many questions. Like the first question right here from Alex, of Alex Washington Live says, <laughs> Sunday love, um, how did you come to Japan and what has your career been like over there? So that's a great question. Mm, well, like right after the show, I had to finish up university because I was like in the yeah. middle. Of, <laughs> so I finished that up. And as soon as I did, I took off to Korea. I had like mm -hmm. a half modeling contract, half work contract where I was like transitioning into the work world. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I came to Japan and I just wanted to be here so bad. I didn't really care what I was doing. <laughs> so I took a job. It's like a managerial work where we do like we do. I don't know, it's like a language learning 
institution. Sure. Um, I'm not working there anymore. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I'm kind of just here doing my own thing right now. I just actually, I'm launching a store. Um, oh, wow. It should be up next month, beginning of next month, a little clothing store. Yeah, I've been working on that like all year. So that's going really well. So that's basically what I'm doing. I was supposed to move back home already, but I'm still but you here. Felt, you <laughs> fell in love with Japan and you are oh, there. I'm there. What's going on? I don't know. Um, and someone I'm, else asked here, Alexandra underscore the greatest ask, um, is asking you about what it, what the quarantine life was like in Japan. Mm-hmm. How did COVID, like was was there, what was that like there versus the way it was in the U.S.? Crazy, because for one, we were one of the first countries that were hit, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm over here warning everybody, like, it's coming, it's coming. And, like, everyone was telling me, you need to move back home. It's so dangerous over there. I can't believe you're over there. And then, like, months later, boom, you guys were in an even worse situation than us. United States, yeah. Mm. It was such a mess. And the thing was, we got hit once, and then we got over it and recovered. And then we actually ended up getting hit again. And now we have no lockdown. Everyone's free to do whatever they want, but it's the numbers are starting to pile up again. So I have gotcha. a feeling it's going to happen all over again. So you still have to do, you guys still wear masks, but you're more of a mask wearing country in general though, right? You wear masks when you go out and stuff? Exactly, yeah. So we still, everyone still wears masks, but they normally already did, so. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, well, let's, let's dig into America's Next Top Model cycle third. I mean, I have a. I also have a lot to say about this right? cycle. There <laughs> I are might so, have a few too. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Let's talk before we dive into some of the questions. Uh, I'm looking at all the people's comments down below. They're like, trying. dig in, dig in. <laughs> That's okay. I'll try and watch it as well. Why don't we talk about your experience walking into casting? I remember you. First of all, you came in with just this this light and this energy, but you were also very open about kind of your personal background, which really touched me because a lot of people don't know that I was adopted as well. I was adopted. I did not know that. You didn't know that? Well, look, You're nice kidding. to meet you. Yes. What? What's what, what this? Yes. I, I mean, my that. story is a little different though. Uh, you know, I was, you know, a, a birth adoption that was arranged before I was born. Um, there, yeah. There's more to that story, but we don't need to get into all that. But yeah, I was, yeah. So, so when you told us about your story, um, mm-hmm. I, I loved how open you were, but talk talk to the fans about that process of walking in. Like, would you the producers prep you to talk about your story? Like, what what was your experience going into casting? First of all, um, honestly, they wanted to like I can tell they were trying to be very polite about it. It somehow got brought up, and they didn't want to pry too much, but they were asking a lot of questions, and they thought that it might be inspirational for other people like me or just like Absolutely. you know models in similar similar situations. Um, I didn't mind talking about it so much, but it's more so for the protection of my family that I didn't want to bring it up because it's still like an ongoing issue. It's, even to this day, it's still a problem. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, okay. Yeah. So it's so difficult to talk about sometimes, but I wanted to make sure I said enough to let people know there are people out there like me mm-hmm. that can do it. You know, like what, whatever it's setting you back in life, it's, it, it's, you can conquer it. And yeah. they, especially Tyra, she was very, very sweet about that. She even actually came, uh, to Bakersfield at some point in time, a couple of years later, and did like a whole speech and everything. It was pretty amazing. Oh, wow. I did not know that. So th- that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's important for people to realize that, you know, again, we're watching a model competition show when people see the final edit, we call it the edit. Um, and of course, it's, it's, you know, by then, you know, the, you know, by the time we got to cycle 13, there were more competition reality shows out there. This was also about story. So it was, you know, it's story and it's modeling. And I think the two really went hand in hand. For me, um, and I'll be very kind of transparent and honest about this. For me, I was still, uh, you know, creatively from the beginning of the season, my job was to make sure we keep it rooted in fashion. And I was trying to keep everything mm. rooted in fashion. And there were a lot of rumors swirling around, you know, with things, this and that, or, or that Tyra and I weren't talking or, or what have you. <laughs> but what, what did happen, and, and it's very noticeable if people go back and watch the cycle specifically, I felt we would kind of re- reached a bit of a creative impasse because it was about okay, but how are we gonna make this fashion uh, uh, and work the creative? And so by the time this cycle came around, yes, I still worked on the show. Uh, yes, I worked with you guys on set. As you know, I'd spend what, 15 hours yes. with you guys some days. 
But in terms of like the creative and what we were kind of putting forth as like the story was really no longer mine. I used to create creative and, and yes, there were many times when, you know, producers and Tyra, as she should, it was her show, step in and go, oh, let's do this, let's do this. But mm -hmm. a lot of the time, and like the final runway shows, they basically just left it up to me to do. And then as the seasons went on, um, they started kind of getting more involved in the photo shoots because they wanted a different story. Oh. Runway shows, I, it was still me. No one wanted to touch that because it was it's a huge beast onto its own. It's a mm -hmm. lot of work. But um, yeah, by this cycle, I really didn't have the same kind of creative input. And if you actually watch the cycle, you even see you know, Brad, who's someone who worked with her, always in the background over my shoulder because that was someone who was there making sure that we were doing exactly what she wanted, which I would have done anyway. I'm, you know, I'm gonna work, I'm working on her show. I would do what she wanted. But I felt like there was this, there was almost a bit of this distrust. Like she didn't, she think I would like skew it more this way or that way. So I don't know. It was just, do you it, think was it was like because, cycle for me. Do you think it's because they were doing something different this time? Like up until well, now, everything, so. yeah, everything changed too. It wasn't just this short cycle, but like all the creative team, uh, my team of producers that worked for me on the creative side mm -hmm. because I was hiring all the creative, they were all told, oh, we're going in a new direction. Everything was new direction. And we had different hair makeup people every shoot, which you probably remember. We didn't oh, have the same crew. Actually a nightmare. That yeah, actually did not go that well. <laughs> it didn't go well because again, we're shooting well. a show in the previous seasons, well, except for several seasons, we had Sutan, Christian, Mark, Anda and Masha. And working with me as a creative so it we knew what the girls needed we knew what hair concerns yeah. there were or what or like and it just became this cycle became a nightmare because we had different hair makeup people have reset <sighs> it was not fun. <laughs> yeah that was that was quite the battle there and i was like really shocked too i was like wait don't you know what you're doing and one of them i i kid you not i forgot which shoot uh -oh. it was the the makeup artist she was like i have no idea what i'm doing and i was like all righty then <laughs> i know the uh the one where we had to like fly through the air like some ninjas and stuff. Yes, I yes, I, it was the ninja photo shoot. Yeah, and I remember that. And it was really frustrating <laughs> for me because I was always you know, charged with bringing on a strong creative team. And mm -hmm. you know, we did have like uh, Vincent Oquendo who, who's gone on to become a huge makeup artist. He was there, but uh, he started coming in and doing some of the shoots. But for a lot of them, it was just a different team. And I remember and this will lead into the next question because there was an early shoot, I recall, where you were getting your makeup done and you were looking gorge. And then Bianca, it was the little kid photo shoot. Oh, and yeah. Bianca's makeup artist was kind of jacking her up, which was not cute. And she already didn't have hair. So we just like, there's not much to go with. <laughs> you gotta get that well, she could right. her face, but yeah, the makeup wasn't strong. But yeah. this, so let's go into this question. Bratz Bully Barbie asked, this season, the show went um, out of its way to portray Bianca as the bitch, um, is what, how she wrote it, of the house. And she still catches a lot of flack from fans because of it. However, Kara was seen multiple times openly talking about how much she hates Nicole and her confessionals and expressing how she wanted to kick Nicole's ass. My question <laughs> was, why does the show season after season go out of the way of portraying Black women as bitches in all the situations? Um, I, first of all, so thank you for your question. I don't really think the show goes out of their way to do that. And I don't believe in that trope of, you know, the black mm. quote unquote bitch. I don't think that's mm. that at all. Um, and I think, but why don't you, because you will have a great perspective, you know, not only as a black woman, but also who everybody loved, but what was really going on in the house in terms of that dynamic what was what was really going on did you feel like it was misedited or um honestly it's really hard to say because mm -hmm. as you guys know we have a lot of interviews and we sit down and we talk with these interviews and there's questions in the interviews now mm -hmm. this depends on how you handle them for me i'm a very outgoing kind of nice like oh my god look at the bright side type of person so it was kind of hard to dig up the me talking trash on people but if you're asked with a question like so how do you feel about blah 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 doing blah 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 and you have like a negative response and that's what shows up, you know, I don't know what to say. It, that's just that's kind of what happened. So I, I don't think they went out of their way to paint her in a bad light, but at the same time, a lot of the negative things that she said were shown. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I'm not in there with her, her interviews. I don't know what she's saying, you know, so I don't know if she was talking mm -hmm. positive about other people. I don't really know what she was saying, but I mean, you just, you gotta watch what you say. <laughs> 
So I just, I just saw actually David St. John chiming in, who is also a dear friend and was a great producer, story producer, senior producer on the show. And oh. as he said, he literally just wrote there, we never put those girls, you know, black women in that light. And that's absolutely mm. true. The show did not do that. However, as individuals, let's take race out of the equation and mm. gender. As individuals, <laughs> as human beings, mm. put in a pressure cooker with other individuals and human beings. In a competition. All, in a competition, <laughs> we all react differently. And I say we yeah. all because I think too many people focus on this idea of women, black women, white women. And, and sure, yes, that's the way it may appear on the surface. But at the end of the day, one of the things, and I do agree with what David said, is behind the scenes and the producers, we looked at individuals and characters. Um, it was never a thing about race. So that, that, that's one thing to, we should make clear. Um, I agree with that, Mo underscore peak asked, what happened to Amber? Uh, and someone answered, uh, <laughs> She's an actress. I, I forgot the exact details. This is another one because Liz, a, a star gazer, uh, wrote she was acting and never thought she'd make it to the cast. What did you think of Amber? She was crazy fun, though. You know what? I actually remember this whole situation because she was okay. at my table. Like, it started at our table. So I forgot what it was. Sometime in the beginning, we all eat together, as you know. We're sitting mm. down, we're having dinner. She's right next to me. Now, she's talking. She, this chick. I don't want to call her crazy, but I don't know what else to call it. Like, she is different. Like, oh, my God. You can't have a normal conversation with her mm -hmm. at all. You cannot. It just goes way off. She starts spouting about Jesus. I'm Christian, too, but I don't, I'm, I don't even know what this was. Anyways, we're at dinner. Everyone's eating. And a couple of us notice that she is cutting the same piece of broccoli for the entire dinner. We are starving. <laughs> Everyone's hungry. We all eat together. So I know that you haven't eaten and you're hungry. And someone, a couple of the girls actually went and snitched on her. They're like, I'm really worried. She's not really eating. I don't know. You guys might want to talk to her, pull her aside. They did pull her aside and they talked to her. Um, after that, I literally did not see her again. <laughs> and the next time you guys announced, like, you know what, for personal reasons, she's personal not reasons, be with yeah. us anymore. I don't know what was going on, but I was like, she, she needs some help. It was, it was, I thought she was acting. But every time I would try and talk to her, like you just can't get through. It was you like you couldn't get through, and it was it was such a show. Even when she walked into the casting room with, Je I just remember I remember Tyra was looking down. I totally remember she was writing notes, and in comes Amber, and I was like, oh girl, catch it, catch it. Oh, she was just just the she. It was like a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> Crazy. I really thought she was pretending, like you know, just for the cameras. But then, like even when the cameras were off. It didn't stop. I was like, I don't think this is a joke. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to think that she was just playing along, but who knows? I but don't you know, it's know. so fun. And a lot of people are just saying, "You're getting so." As you're talking, I'm reading it. You're getting so much love. Sunday, Sunday, so gorgeous. Sunday I is put like on my glasses because I can you hardly put see your glasses this. on, girl. I got you. You got you. You got to show off your lashes. They are living for you. I love y'all. I love y'all. Oh my god. They are I'm living sorry. for you. So. Morg, I think it's pronounced Morg, M-O-R-G underscore Yance, um, said, why were there only three main judges this season? Was Paulina let go to abruptly to be replaced in time for filming? That's Good bad. question. Now, yeah, Paulina, I well, I, I can tell you a little bit of that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, David St. John, feel free to chime in Chime down in. below in the comments. But um, Paulina has talked a lot about how uh, they um, said that they were moving in a new direction and they were trying to trim budgets. She, I don't want to put words in Paulina's mouth. She's given many interviews that are really a lot of fun because she keeps it 100 <laughs> and real. But um, yeah, it was a little bit odd to see that there were now four judges. And I saw there was a question, well, what would happen when it's a 2-2 tie? Um, I'm going to give you an example, you know, instead of kind of, if you, you know, have you, have you, you've watched RuPaul's Drag Race, maybe you once tried to watch bit. the show. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's somewhat of a kind of parody with <laughs> super talented people beyond the kids on that show. I just can't imagine how much talent they have and like one finger, but it's like a parody <laughs> of top models. So I love Ru's line when she goes, silence, I have made my decision. I think that verbiage kind of sums it up. Uh, so in our show, 
you know, yes, the judges would have discussions about the girls and their performance. But, you know, ultimately it came down to a certain producer and, you know, the host of her own show. And, I, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. I just think that when it came down to a group of, you know, three judges with a guest judge, I mean, that's just how decisions were made. And mm -hmm. especially now, you know, so... I just thought I'd just throw that out there for those all wondering how those decisions were made. So there were no tiebreakers, there were no straws drawn. So I am spilling to that little was, bit of tea. Was there ever like any extra weight given to the judge that was actually in the field with us that day or, you know, observed the shoot or they knew what was going I, on? I think definitely there was consideration. And, and, you know, Tyra would read Jay's notes. Well, Mr. Jay would say she'd read my notes at judging. Um, and obviously, because I'm spending that day, you know, with you guys, um, you know, I would point out the strengths and weaknesses. Like one of the things that annoyed me, honestly, when the judges would be like, oh, my God, Sunday, you're, pow you're pouting too much. I'm like, I was like, what the fuck? She's got the most gorgeous I'm lips. Sorry. And like, those, that's the <laughs> pout everybody wants. Everybody wants that pout. I'm like, girl, bye. I was like, uh, <laughs> well, pout, thank you girl. For that. Thank Do you. your thing. <laughs> yes. So, oh, by the way, someone just wrote that Tyra said she was outvoted once. Oh, I wonder when that mm. was. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like, um, yeah, we'll leave that. Um, okay, can we just talk about, there's no question about this, but since we are spilling tea, can we talk about the super smize teach moment? Uh, super smize, <laughs> exactly. Let us talk about Super Smize and y'all put in them cat suits and what oh, did Lord. you think of that moment? That whole, well, one thing you just threw it out there out of nowhere and I didn't even know what was going on, which was half of the show, but oh my goodness. So you walked into it. So for those who don't know what happened, like really top line, tell everybody what happened. You guys walked into this space <laughs> where there was, it looked like this crazy photographer was shooting Tyra in a trench coat with glasses. And then she rips it all off and she's in spandex cat suit and a cape. And she goes, I'm super smize. And it's this <laughs> whole character. Hence, my side note was this oh. is when the show truly jumped the shark. But anyhow, tell us what happened after that. Because literally, I can tell you, everyone on production was like, I can't believe we're doing this, but go ahead. <laughs> Feel free. No, I was shocked. It was just like, it was kind of like right when we were breaking into everything. So I'm like, this is what we're doing. Okay, this, this is the show. And I just felt like everything after that was over the top for me. I had to just be over the top and just crazy and that whole scene was nuts and I didn't even know what was going on she like smile with your eyes I'm just like all right hold on and I'm pretty sure I lost yeah I did I lost that challenge <laughs> and then the challenge they put you guys in these cat suits and then you walked into this space that looked like a broke down knocked down version of 2001 a space odyssey with these computers <laughs> and just corny as all get out <laughs> Uh, and then they put you in these cat suits, which, oh my, felt so badly. There were some camel toes. They could, ooh, <laughs> there were some moments. I don't know what was going on. I felt so badly for you guys. Oh, and, and then she did this challenge about the smize meter was measuring oh. the smize. I, I, felt, I felt badly for you guys. I felt badly for all of us on the show. Oh. I felt badly for the show. I felt like we were now headed in a, a, a whole other trajectory. Direction. <laughs> We lost all our creative teams. Oh, man. Mother was steering the ship, and I don't know, we were headed for an iceberg. I don't know, that's how I say it. I, I do, I don't remember which girl, to be honest. Completely don't remember, I just remember them saying like, this is very childish, I'm here as like a professional model, yeah, this is not exactly. expected. I feel like this is just straight reality TV, blah, blah, blah. She just, and I really, I didn't know what to expect, and I'm just like, okay, is this what we're doing? This is what we're doing. <laughs> Yeah, people are writing so cringe. Oh All my right, gosh. This is, yeah, this it's is like, what yeah. we're doing. <laughs> yeah, and it's sad. Your words were very interesting there, too, because I felt like you guys realized, like, you were like, okay, we're no longer in a model competition. We're in, like, almost like a corny game show. I, it, it, it really broke my heart. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, oh, I yeah. hated seeing that. And when it went on air, I remember coming on TV. And when that scene started, I got up. I walked out of the living room. I couldn't even watch it. I really couldn't. I couldn't watch it. It's so oh, embarrassing. God. It's uncomfortable. It was, 
it was it was something and it's just like when you don't know what to expect i don't know how to judge it in that moment mm. so i'm just like is this what the show is like <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be it, it it turned <laughs> into this um olivia period to mac has a great question for you sunday the girls never wore heels during judging was that because it was the petite cycle what did they tell you why didn't y'all wear heels they did they said do not wear heels we want to portray you guys in your real height we want to show exactly how tall you, tall you are so they can compare and they'll know like the situation and blah blah just don't wear heels so everyone knows how tall you are that's what they told us so yeah, every single day we had up. on flats which yeah. really didn't help because uh. i needed to practice in my heels yeah yeah that's not cute but I, I get it from a reality show and it had turned into a game show at that point <laughs> um so <laughs> So oh, J under the letter J underscore track has a question for you Sunday. So specifically mm -hmm. for Sunday during the episode that she was eliminated, she mentioned how that if she made it to the final four, she would tell the girls her emotional story, her experience. If Sunday doesn't mind sharing, do you think we could get to know what that story was? That's a good question. But if you don't feel comfortable talking about it in detail, because you kind of talked about it before and there's still... In, in terms of protecting your family, you don't have to answer that. But did you really feel you were gonna tell the girls that on air if you'd made it to the final four? Yeah, I definitely was gonna tell them. And um, it, at the time I didn't really know cause it wasn't until after the show aired and I saw my family's reaction and how everything went. I was like, I'm glad I didn't say anything. I was but, like, yeah. But basically it's not, it's not. <laughs> don't feel you need to talk about it. I really don't think, it's not a huge problem. It's more so, it's just one person, which is my mother, who is mm -hmm. very uncomfortable with me sharing exactly what happened. The, the details of how we got into the foster system is actually completely crazy. Y'all probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. It's, it's mm -hmm. very tragic. It's, it's, mm -hmm. It was pretty traumatizing. It's absolutely horrible. But my mother hasn't found a way to own up to that. Mm -hmm. uh, she just she keeps blaming everything and... She gets very angry if I ever say anything. She's like, don't keep telling that same old story. That same old story is my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, who I am and what happened. So, you know, yeah, but I, I was going to tell the girls, definitely. I have to say one of the things that I admire so greatly about you is your spirit and your energy. Oh. It's so, you know, we all have, you know, varying degrees of, you know, tragedy and things that, you know, uh, uh, to, to one person might not be seen as tragic, but to others it is a tragedy. But one of the things that I've always noticed about you um, from even when we worked all those years back uh, on Top Model is that Sunday is Sunday and I'm here okay. and I do me and you don't, even though things, as you say, it's part of your life, you don't allow that to be a hindrance in any way. Um, and just, I think you are an amazing role model in terms of like pushing through, being yourself, mm -hmm. finding the silver lining. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even with everything that's going on in our world right now, people are griping about this, this, and this. And like you have, we have to get up and practice some form of gratitude. You know, Absolutely. well, I am grateful <laughs> that I have a roof over my head and I can eat right? food. Right, I think a lot of yeah. people haven't actually been in those situations. Like I've been yeah. with nothing and it's just like, you, it's very easy to be grateful for the things that you do have when you've had nothing or, or yeah. you know it could be so much worse. Yeah. It's hard to imagine. I try to tell people to imagine like, yes, but it could be a lot worse. And it's actually hard for them to imagine because they haven't been through anything, but yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for being you. I think it's great. <laughs> I really love that you're you because you're out there kind of, you know, that's a way of practicing healing forward for other people. And we need mm. more of that energy out there. I, I firmly believe that. Um, Here's another question from Olivia Dot to Mac. And it says, does the episodes usually focus more on the girl who goes home? I tend to notice the eliminated girl has more screen time than the other girls. <laughs> Tell me your experience from, from watching yourself on TV. You know what? Like, okay, I, from... From there the is a formula, I, by the way, and I'm, I'll spill it, but go ahead. I need to know, but okay, this is crazy, but I swear, every single time someone got eliminated, at some point, we knew who who was going next, and oh, we were really? always right. You, oh, wow, okay. Almost every time, because it was just the way that everything was flowing together, how some things weren't working, and 
one thing that I know is our cycle was so humble. And I think it's because we're all mm -hmm. short models. We don't really have a chance, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. We were so mm -hmm. grateful. So there wasn't much drama going on and everyone was on their A game. Everyone was trying not to mess up type of thing. And so when someone did mess up or slipped up just a little bit, I was like, oh, shoot, it's you next. And then <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's, oh, that's shit, <laughs> it's your turn, girl. Like, even if we thought, you know, there was a reason for it or whatever, it just didn't matter. Like, we just knew, like, we got to pick it's, someone. <laughs> it's interesting because, uh, you know, first of all, there is, uh, the show is edited afterwards, obviously. You know, there are producers and directors on set taking notes because we don't, they don't really know who is going that, that week. But of course uh -huh. the show is edited afterwards. So there is a formula. I'm just going to bust it wide open. <laughs> what they do is, so when you've got like 14 girls, right? It's very hard. Yeah, sip that tea. When you've got 14 girls and you've only got 41 minutes, well, we have what's called our four story girls. So you'll hear bits and pieces from the other girls, especially in the first few episodes, right? But you've got to have like what are called four story girls. Those four story girls kind of move forward with story. And one of those four is the eliminated girl because of course the editors already know. Ooh, David St. John is probably going to curse me out because, you know, he was working on that <laughs> stuff at that time. But that's how they kind of assemble it. So I think mm -hmm. Olivia had a great question. It's like, do you, of course, they got to play the girl that's eliminated because you can't just have someone eliminate. You know, and like, they're like, out why? Of the what happened? Why? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you have to answer the why for the, for the viewers, right? Yeah. But one of the girls that I felt left too early, in, in my opinion, was it Lisa... She got eliminated right after, it was Lisa, after we did that horse photo shoot where you guys were on the horse. Was that Lisa? Short, she had short red hair normally, but they gave her a long. Oh, no, 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 that was dark... a Courtney, yeah. Lisa was the first to go. Lisa was the first to go. Wasn't that Amber that went Amber first? Amber didn't make it. So, oh, Amber didn't uh, make it. So, yeah, so it was, was it Rachel? Spot. It was Rachel then. It was no, Rachel. Rachel left a little bit later. I think that was Courtney. The short red hair, she broke her leg. Courtney. Yes, it was yeah. Courtney. You're right. Sorry, I mix it. I remember everyone's no name, but sometimes I like mix them up. So, I don't yes, even Courtney. know how you know anyone's name at this point. So <laughs> trust really? me, I'm impressed. After I all the time I couple. spend with you guys, I, I like, like I just can't forget everybody's name. But I, I just mixed them up. Yeah, but it was Courtney. And I felt like Courtney was gorgeous. She worked hard. She had the broken foot. Mm -hmm. I that was one I was surprised by. I was like, really? We're sending her home already? Great she girl. Is. And then they edited it to look like they edited it to look like I was hammering her on her photo shoot, which oh. I wasn't, which pissed me mm -hmm. off because they were like, oh, they always cut to like the comments that I make, which were edged on by certain people now, Brad, in the background going, saying things, right? Yeah, I'm throwing yes. all sorts of people um, under the bus. <laughs> she's one of the ones I actually kept in contact with. She is still to this day so gorgeous. I'm like, you have such oh. a nice face. Oh. I love her. Please tell her hi when you talk to her. I, <laughs> I, her. I really did. Um, so here's another question from um, T underscore dolls one. Um, she has two questions. Um, one, do you know why Jennifer was eliminated uh, in the double elimination at the top four? And one, I feel like she was much stronger than Laura and should have been in the top two with Nicole. And number two, do you have a favorite photo from this particular cycle? Um, and hers was um, that her said is her personal favorite is Aaron's headscarf photo. I loved Aaron's headscarf photo. Gorgeous photo. Oh, uh, gorgeous. So I do agree with you. I love that photo. Um, the Jennifer thing, I don't know the reason. That's um, a good question. That is a good question. She was really strong. Um, I love Laura's personality too. What, 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 what were your feelings on that? Honestly, when it got to just us, we all were like, we don't know. That's when all the guessing stopped. And I was like, it can go any way. It can go any direction. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, it's it's a show. It's not just for this this contract here. It's a show. And, and as you said, it's like, it's a story. Well, who has a story as well? And I feel like Laura had a really good story also. That, and she yeah, was but so sweet. When they get to those final girls, though, they are looking at performance, too. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know... Because Nicole definitely was like slaying the photo shoots. I mean, every she was, single one. Oh, she was so <laughs> every good. Single one. 
Yeah. She, I think I honestly was like, she should have best photo almost every single time. So when she like, it, it was so funny that they, you guys never gave it to her until like way late. And I'm like, it's about time. She's like, yeah. <laughs> she just bluntly was like, yes. <laughs> but I interrupted you. You were also saying you couldn't, you guys just didn't know which way it was going to go in the end. Yeah, I actually, well, I, I was in Hawaii and I don't even remember who, who I was sharing a room with because I was eliminated at this point, but I was still there because <laughs> you guys kept me on for yep. the last episode. So that was the one episode I have no connection with. So I don't really know what happened. Gotcha. Like, I, have, I have no idea. What was, what was your favorite photo shoot? Because she had a favorite photo of the season, but what was your favorite photo shoot of the season to do? And what was your favorite photo? Mm, that's hard. Let's see. Favorite photo shoot. Can I, I tell you mine say, while you're thinking? Yes, please. The Cirque du Soleil in oh, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yes. I oh my God. Say Soleil, I don't know. I'm gonna but... probably. I'm gonna say for two reasons. One, I loved. Okay, I'm gonna say for three reasons. I'm gonna first give you the frivolous one. We were doing group shots. Mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> group shots. Group shots meant only we were only doing three photos, so that made the day quicker, and it was already long. Because uh, you guys had to fly in and all that kind of oh, stuff. Man. Um, but I also love the creative of that. And I love Cirque du Soleil. What? And so <laughs> getting that opportunity to be part of that introduction. And I was put into one of those characters and hooked yeah, up on the harness that, and the whole little blown away. <laughs> yes. My, my, all the producers made fun of me because I, I would say, and drama. Or I go drama <laughs> and crazy. Whatever. I, I remember my intro. It was funny. That was but I took your, so I took your shoot. That was your favorite shoot? That, uh, that was the one I wanted to say. I'm like, I, I, but I don't want to say that one because that's like obviously so, so much fun. But it really was. And yeah. I just feel like the energy was just there. And no one was like, oh, I'm so, well, a couple people were, but we weren't really focused on the fact that we're like up in the sky. <laughs> like some people were afraid of heights, but everyone was so excited. It was just such good energy. And I like yes. modeling alongside some other people. We were in teams. I don't know. Everything was just the hair, the makeup, everything. It was so much fun. So I just saw a bunch of questions going by about this. Um, and someone just said the ninja shoot, which is I cool. hate that shoot. No. <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, I know. Cause, and I remember my, even me, I was like, ooh, she's just up there like mm, Just like Sunday. a broken, retarded. And I wanted you to, you, I thought you were gonna kill that shoot. Now oh, we I will have to address you. this cause a lot of people are writing it. So I don't want to think you guys are, think I'm ignoring your comments down below cause I am seeing them. I'm also trying to navigate the questions that people took time to put in ahead of time. But everyone's talking about the Hoppa photo shoot which is another big controversial shoot uh the, since like cycle four then we did this shoot again we're in hawaii so i'll kind of set the stage this much with this shoot i like i've already said there was a bit of, there were a lot there was some creative friction i wasn't really even working on creative i had to be there as a creative director uh if you guys all notice with the hoppa shoot that tyra shot a second photo shoot this season um the first she'd already done the headscarf one which was super mm -hmm. cool she typically only shoots one a season um, that is because even when we looked for photographers, photographers did not want to shoot the shoot. And Tyra felt that she's like, well, I'm going to, she's like, I, I can do this. And, you know, we're doing something positive here. She really had her reasons and I'll let her, I don't want to ever speak for her. So I will let her speak about her reasons around the Hoppa shoot. And I think if you watch the introduction, cause I don't really say much, I just introduce her. She's jump gnawing on the sugar cane, which someone asked the question. Yes, she really was eating <laughs> yes, it. Yes, she did. <laughs> she was really eating that sugar cane, but uh -huh. she explained her reasons for that shoot. Um, but I noticed, I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with it. How did you girls feel about that? I know only so much was shown on TV. What was the real conversation? Did you guys like that? Were you comfortable with it? I mean, and for me too, I'm, I am biracial. So Hapa, mm. which means you know yeah. what did she say too and all, all this stuff i don't know it felt a little uncomfortable for me but i wasn't really allowed to say anything at that point in time i just had to go to work um mm -hmm. did the By girls the feel way, like this was strange it, it it became strange so by the way this is actually my maybe second favorite photo shoot the, the atmosphere was i can see it was very positive yeah. in the beginning and then Tyra was just so involved and she seemed like she cared so much that I think all the girls kind of really felt that. 
And mm -hmm. in the beginning, when she explained it, everyone's like, oh, okay, this sounds like something really cool. And then as we started going through hair and makeup, and Aaron was in blackface, and Nicole's, or was Nicole in blackface? I don't know. And then oh, um, yeah. <clears throat> the Native American thing, we all, some girls started really feeling uncomfortable. Like, I don't know what we're doing. I mean, all I had to do was wear this like Moroccan thing. So mine wasn't that bad. And they tried to make my skin lighter. <laughs> and it, it, as hair and makeup developed with the shoot, that's when everybody mm. started feeling a little bit uncomfortable. But I don't think anybody really said anything. It was kind of like- Yeah, it was not the environment where you were allowed to say anything. No, um, and Tyra was and, so excited. So it's like- Well, she had to be because she was the one who was leading this. She felt adamant she wanted to do the shoot. Mm. Um, I don't know if you girls noticed even even from when I did the, the scarf shoot with her, if you notice even with that shoot, I was just kind of in the back. I really wasn't saying a lot. I wasn't, you can even see it on air. Um, it was that environment, that work environment for us, and I'm saying us meaning we're on crew and talent. It was, it was an environment where you were at that time, you were no longer allowed to kind of speak your truth, uh -huh. which was very uncomfortable. You could not, say, look, I'm uncomfortable. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about uh -huh. that? Uh, and so I'm not ever going to speak for her. I, I know people have tried to throw under the bus now. I don't think it's fair either because she's also spoken up for herself and apologized <laughs> several times. Um, but and I don't think she really I, meant anything, anything bad out of it, you know? Just... No, she didn't. She didn't. However, the thing that is still a struggle for me was just the environment we were all working in because That's there were many people and producers who were uncomfortable and we were not allowed our feelings, which is not, which yeah, is not, be. that's, that's the part that's difficult. That's the part that I, I remember, you know, mm. you know, unfortunately, so. And they but, definitely should get you guys input in these things. Yeah, no, we were not at that point any longer. Um, so uh, here's a great question, I guess. So CL Barden says, love Sunday, love Laura, love Jennifer. As a short woman, I love the cycle. Question, I remember the Gosies uh, were different than past seasons, jewelry, casting calls, et cetera, and not the usual go to a designer type situation. Is this because of their height? Was this to be more of a real life situation? I seem oh, to remember you saying something from your last chat that short models can work, but they don't, won't walk a runway. Uh, they mm -hmm. won't do a lot of runway work. And yes, yeah, so thank you for your question. I think what the producers were trying to do was do something very realistic. Um, oh. Because again, short models, you can work. I mean, you can work beauty There's campaigns. A lot. Yeah. There's a lot of work. And I think they were trying to tailor the casting uh, to be that way. Did you guys feel that way at the time? Like that we this did, was different? We were expecting something where we had to do a little bit of a walking. We did, I know, with one of the, the clothing, um, go, we went to go, I forgot, it was some clothing place, and they had us walk, like, really short. And I remember some of the girls, like, dang, we didn't really walk this time. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, probably we're not going to be walking. <laughs> uh, Some, and, and someone just wrote there at the bottom, Eureka had asked, what was Chanel Mon like on set? Did you have any experiences, or were, did you love seeing her? She was so sweet, but it was very short, but very sweet. Mm -hmm. There were some judges that just came off and you're just like, I'm, I'm over you. <laughs> but she was not one of them. She was really, really kind, actually. And but what about Kim Kardashian? Because she was super sweet. That's where I don't want to. <laughs> oh, okay. So she can move right on with that one. Okay, take your tea. We'll go next question. All right, I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I believe she called me like a washing, no, Tyra called me the washing machine salesman and she was chuckling. She had too much to say. She wasn't even there. That was my problem. <laughs> I was just like, you got too much to say. <laughs> I love it. She goes, she had way too much to say. Mm -hmm. um, so this is from Douglas Cameron Hunter. Uh, hi, Jay and Sunday. Uh, during one of the judgings, Tyra did a hilarious impression of Sunday's voice and, and suggest <laughs> that she put... <laughs> Novocaine in her mouth to try and relax it, and she sounded like a news broadcaster. Oh my no, god, I totally forgot that. It. This was what I was talking So, about. Sunday, have you done any voiceover work or news reporting oh. drawing from Tyra's inspiration? Is the question. <laughs> you know what's sad? That was actually like my original like dream was to be a voiceover actress for like cartoons and stuff like that. Honestly, my voice is so freaking annoying. I just cannot even tell you. Like, oh, I, I disagree. Oh no, it's I disagree. So strange. It's I like manly tell... and like weird. No. And it wasn't until like the show that I'm like, I sound like that. It was so hard to watch. 
it's, it's really hard voice. to actually listen to your own voice. I know oh. I, I really hated listening to my own voice early on. What? Because it can a be a soothing, beautiful voice. What are you talking about? And see, I hear it as burnished and... Uh, what? Um, I don't know. I, no. I, I, I'm used no. to it now. I know, it I know, I just, never. I'm used to it. But I disagree with you because you have, you really clearly enunciate and uh, I think you could do some form of broadcast journalism. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. I think it just doesn't fit my face. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> She's it's like, a little awkward. Her perfect heart-shaped face. Yeah. <laughs> but, yes. But I love everyone saying... People are down below like, I hate my voice. I hate my voice. I hate, I think everybody hates hearing their own voice. You guys voice, are but... so sweet. No, yeah. is like, I always get comments on it. So I know it's something. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> so they love underscore miles has a question, which is, do you find it funny how many of the girls uh, underestimated Nicole and she won the competition? What do you think about that? Especially in early, in early episodes, every, the girls, I noticed there were always shots of the girls gossiping, like especially in the kid photo shoot on the balcony. Everyone was like, oh, da, 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 and she doesn't say anything. And actually, I remember that kid photo shoot because Nicole walked on set. I was like, hi, so are you ready? Da, da, da. She's like, uh-huh. I was like, okay, ready? She needed pep mm -hmm. talks. She was so nervous. And then she'd get on set and she'd and just lay it and angle and ooh, ooh. Every shot was a shot. And then I'd walk Every off and go, time. oh my God, girl, you were amazing. Blah, 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 blah. She goes, thanks. I was like, is that all you got? <laughs> Uh-huh. She really, she really, but she was, all I cared about is like, look, she's look, delivering, can you, you know? Yes, can you produce? Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely do not think anyone was underestimating her. As a matter of fact, one of the first conversations I ever had with Jen, when we weren't even chosen yet to be on the show, was mm -hmm. that girl's going to win. <laughs> that girl has the look. Oh, you all knew it. Oh, wow. Now, me and Jen, I remember having this exact conversation, and it was just so funny. Like, she just, every single time, just never disappointed. I don't think anyone was uh, underestimating that girl. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, M.W. Luciano says, Sunday was being on this America's Next Top Model cycle the kick on the door for your current career, were you able to work with any fashion designers that looked over your height? If yes, how was that experience? Like what, was, what, was, what were your modeling experiences post the show? Because I know other girls have talked about how they had to kind of get rid of that portfolio. They couldn't use that portfolio, but then they rebranded <laughs> themselves and then they did work like Faux and Amina, they went off and worked. Um, we were talking about them in last cycle, the last uh, Jay's chat. Um, but how was your experience from that? You know, and I think this was a huge thing after the show where I rather made friends with the girls or I didn't. A lot of girls were saying like, this was a problem for them. This ruined their career. And I'm just like, well, would you have even had any opportunities if you didn't do the show? For me, it actually mm -hmm. wasn't a negative thing at all. If anything, mm -hmm. it definitely yeah. helped. It didn't really knock down any huge doors. There was one gig that I got with Coca-Cola where actually one of the photographers who I guess shot for the show, which I don't remember at all, which is the sad part because I don't remember his face for some reason, I don't know if he- And he used... shot during your cycle? That's what he said. Or maybe he had some kind of connection to it, but- It, it I... could have been like Jonathan Mannion who shot when you guys were, it, cause he's done a lot of stuff for them and he's an incredible photographer. He, um, remember when you guys were with the ropes? The ropes, we were, and it was hot as hell. We were in that like, <laughs> oh my God, that day. <laughs> Oh my, I, that was the day I felt like I was fainting at the end of the day. But anyway, we were, had all those ropes and rings, like a, like a dilapidated Didn't school Nigel playground. Didn't Nigel shoot that though? No, that, his name was Jonathan Mannion shot that. Nigel didn't shoot that, no. I don't know, but I just felt so guilty and he knew so much about me. So I'm like, we must have met. But for some odd reason, his face just didn't ring any bells. Anyways, this mm. casting was huge, huge Coca-Cola lying out the door in LA. And I just come and he's like, Sunday, get in here. And they could like just jumps me through the entire casting process. And I book it. I was like, that came in handy. <laughs> but, so look at but, that. That's good. Yeah, but That's cute. other than Coca-Cola, um, it didn't, it didn't like bust down any doors, but it definitely helped. And a lot of things they'd see like, oh, she's from Top Model. Well, let's, let's, let's bring her in type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. See, I love hearing those good stories because that's all, that's really positive as well. Um, yeah, definitely not a negative thing. Not for me. <laughs> so here's, this is from Dion Arroyo. I hope I pronounced that correct. Lee, sorry. Dion 
Oh, I think it's Dion Arrero, Arrero, I think is the username, I'm sorry. So because I think it's awesome that you're doing these chats. My question, when the three of you were choosing the 14 girls, did you guys have any off screen or edited out disagreements? And those, and those bell bottoms though, uh, LOL, I love it. Shout out to Miss J. Okay, so we need to talk about these damn bell bottom jeans that I wore for a lot of cycles, which... <laughs> I didn't really love, but I kind of like, okay, so here's the thing. As you know, Sunday, Nigel and Miss J are like 6'4". Oh I'm 6'1". So I'm tall, like I, I'm not you, short though. by any means. Yeah. But the thing was I had to wear like these boots and we had to hide the boots with these damn bell-bottom jeans. And That's but what I'm was six going one. on. I do not wear any of that shit anymore ever, like for years and years and years. Like I, but I am 6'1", so I think that's the thing that I do here on the street every day, by the way, is like I walk by people and sometimes you hear, oh my God, that's Mr. J. And then I'll hear, that's not him, he's not that tall. You know, because everybody <laughs> thinks I'm short, but I'm 6'1". Because they're so, so tall in comparison. But to answer the question, uh, Dion, um, <laughs> there were no arguments or edits. I think when we do that kind of breakdown in casting, we really just talk about all the positive and negatives of all the girls, they edited it together. And we were pretty much together on who the group should be. But what people don't know, and I've not talked about this in any Jay's chat, get your teacup. That is that all y'all kind of go to the network. And the network executives all have a bit of a say in the final cast in the house. Oh. Meaning not you physically, like your books and your tapes, they go, they go here are the ones that we're proposing as the cast, but it's really the network that makes um, the kind of, they have their opinions as to who should be in there too. I remember the name Michelle something, Michelle. Michelle Mock, but she's a casting director. Not, yeah, Mich nothing to do with that. No relation to Ken Mock, yeah, at all. But no. yeah, but it's not her, but the actual executives at the network also have a bit of a say. So, well, I mean, it, anyway. it makes sense. Yeah, I guess, well, it may, yeah, it's a show. Um, <laughs> so here's another question from Shane Justin one two three four. Hi Jane Sunday. Were you slightly disappointed that you all didn't get to go overseas like the other cycles and had to go to Hawaii? The majority of the other overseas destinations were picked based off of their fashion presence. Do you think you were all slighted since this was the petite cycle? What is your thought on that? Because I mean, a lot of major campaigns are shot in Hawaii and a lot of the Caribbean. Um, is it a fashion destination? No, but it's a definite huge shoot location. But how did you girls feel with that announcement? Honestly, at the time, we were literally all so excited. Like, we had zero complaints. Going to Hawaii, yes. I don't know why it did not register that we're not going abroad. No one even <laughs> realized. We were so yeah. excited. Like, I, I don't even know. It, it, it's Hawaii. Like, of all of America, like, come on, Hawaii. Okay, great. Because like, we went from LA really... to Hawaii. It was like just a sh <laughs> just It, it was so close. But China. at the time, we were excited. But then later on, it, it kind of, like, clicked of how much work I had to actually go through to get a passport in time. Because, like, you guys, like, you're on the show next week, get a passport. So I had to, like, I'm not even living in LA. I had to drive six hours, two days wait mm. all day to get this passport and it was like a lot of work for my mother and my family and us to get it and they were like you're not even going abroad I, was like, oh. <laughs> I know all you, you just needed a driver's license to go to hawaii <laughs> really like, you don't oh, even need a passport yet but I know. Like, other than other than that i i i was just really excited to be honest <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, I do wish we could have went abroad it would have been my first but so, so I think there's a question here that's interesting, and I don't remember this, so maybe you can help me. It says Olivia, same Olivia dot to Max said, in the Vegas shoot, did you actually not say anything to one group of the girls, or was that edited out? It was because I know there were three groups. Is there one group I didn't speak to? I don't remember that. I worked with all of you guys. I don't. I'm pretty sure you did. That I think it must have been a product of editing because. Uh. If you know, because, well, you watch the show, you live the show, so you know the power of the edit. It, yeah. It can be real. Very strong. <laughs> yeah, very, may the force be with the editor. Ooh. That's the that's the person you need to be good friends with. Ooh, Man, I really have fights lied. with those editors, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> so here's an interesting question from Glitters0143. Mr. J, it seems like there's always a girl every cycle running late during the Go See Challenge. Are the girls not allowed to wear watches or are they just messy? How do you choose which designers are featured in the Go Sees? 
Um, I think girls are just late. You guys are not told you can't wear watches. Did you feel there was any interference from production? Oh, 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 I feel some tea. What is it? We were the only ones that were late, okay? But, <laughs> and like, oh, okay. Have you ever driven in LA? Like, in, it's like I horrendous. said, you put, you put Chill Ray and like overly ambitious Sunday together in a car. We're like, we can do it all. No, we only got 10 minutes. Totally fine. We can make it. Like, we just, we, we did way too much. We just really thought we could do it, which we could have <laughs> in the perfect situation. But we got stuck in traffic and then we got lost. So I was like, uh -huh. yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> but you, we, yeah, LA, LA traffic is horrible. I live in obviously like, so I drive in New York city. I have a car cause I have a place outside the city, but I drive in the city all the time. I didn't know that was possible. Manhattan. Yeah, New York. Yeah. Like you, people think, people in LA think it's crazy that I drive in New York. I'm like, no, what's crazy is driving in LA. You want to talk about I'm drivers. Telling you. They're messy too. And Woo. you cannot find, par parking's not even a thing anymore. Like at all. In LA? Yeah, I you, went back what? last year and I could not believe, can't find parking anywhere. You have to For go to like a parking the most lot in valet. Places. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so Crystal underscore NW, Mr. J, how well do you think the girls of this cycle would actually fare in the real world of high fashion? Um, I know this cycle was meant to prepare the girls for careers in high fashion, but what do you think the industry um, would be truly for girls who are 5'3", five, 5'5", five, five, et cetera? You know, I think we did talk about this before. Thank you for your question, Crystal. I think it's, um, we weren't really prepping for high fashion, but what was a great message, and because we get it all the time, Girls who are not five nine can work, like really have yeah. huge commercial careers. And I actually say this all the time: you can make way more money as a commercial <laughs> model, <laughs> literally. And you can be five true. five. You mm. can make a lot more money at five five uh, than someone who's five ten trying to break into super high fashion. So, for all of you short girls out there, and you feel that you have it in you, do know, like Target. Like I don't know why I keep bringing up Target, but like. Major advertisers There's look so for the much. right face, the right energy. You can mm. go out and have a major career, a beauty career. Um, I know girl, I used to shoot girls. Um, when I was at Harper's Bazaar, I did this one beauty editorial, and the girls that came in were short, stunning oh, yeah. you girls. Know what? I ended up getting Milani, um, the makeup cosmetic line, because of Top Model as well. She's like, I loved you on the show. We want you as the face. So I was like the spokesmodel for them. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot out See? there. Yeah, and you, and because that's because you got skin for life, honey. Oh. <laughs> Gorgeous you know what? I was skin. trying to figure out how to put a filter on this thing, but I was just like, all right, I'm not going to be that girl. You, you don't need a filter. <laughs> oh my God, you look so gorgeous. Here's a fun question as we're like wrapping up. AR Barnes underscore 14 says, Sunday, how did you handle living with Erin? Was she really that whiny or was it editing? You know what's funny? Erin <laughs> is literally the one that I talk to the most nowadays. I think I speak to her every day. Really? Oh my God, it's tell Aaron I say hi. Yeah, I talked to her the most. And I, I, I watch it back and we're both like, we are both so cringy. We don't, we can't even watch this. Like we did, I don't think we realized how that was happening. And I feel like my energy and hers and just screechy, loud, annoying voices, like it, they just cancel yeah. each other out. So yeah, yeah it, it, it wasn't as bad as it seems on, you know, on the show. It really wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't, and I that's really the thing too. It, it, it's the thing too. I mean, again, you're in a competition. It's a pressure cooker. It's a bunch of girls together. <laughs> I know I would never do it uh, personally. I don't know how. I mean, going into something like that, and 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 then you've just got, and then you carry the energy because you have this whole production around you, mm -hmm. and this energy. There was a lot of tension in production. I mean, oh, a lot of tension. You guys have to feel that energy pushing at you. You know, every, and sure. every single time, you know, and at the same time, we we're all trying to get along and be really good friends, like genuine, nice people. Like we weren't very catty. It wasn't a lot of fat fights going on, like stuff like that yeah. actually wasn't really happening. So I think, it, yeah, yeah. It's a lot yeah. of pressure. And yes. And then the last question was a question we already answered about the, the, it was the question I was looking for. This came from, I am nothing. 712 was reducing the judging roster from five to four, a cost reduction measure. Uh, how were eliminations <laughs> or winners decided upon if there was a two, two split? I think we already answered what would happen if there was a two, two split. There was a certain person who was a tiebreaker. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so any question, I'm seeing a lot of questions down there, guys. So if you want any, someone just wrote, where's Nicole now? Um, do you keep in touch with Nicole? Someone, someone else had written that she's not on social media anymore. 
Someone else also just wrote, how did you feel about your makeover? That's a good question. Ooh. Um, <laughs> yes! I know the makeover was. Ooh. I think a lot of people don't know this, but I actually got the makeover twice because it was so bad. And then I ended up complaining. I didn't like complain, but I was like, hey, come on now. We in a competition that I look like a mop. Please. And Tyra told me, she said, if you make it past blah, 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 we'll redo your makeover. So they did. They finally redid my hair. But like the very next day, we had this underwater shoot and it was just trashed all over again. I, I remember that. Yeah, I was not. I'm a long hair girl. Was, I don't like short hair to begin with. So. It was like cute short hair. It was like Kate it plus was, eight. Very like not, not. It's the, it's the hairdo people make fun of now. I was like, of course, you know that we had no choice over that either. And that was the oh. first season, but we introduced, oh, I can't even say the word, tie overs. Ugh. And remember, it was like way that started, we, we guys started the, we started the competition with the makeover. We'd never done that before. You guys got makeovers before right you went in the house. The yeah, right exactly. Right off the bat. And I didn't know how to maintain this hairstyle either. Like, I don't know how to style it or do it. And it was, it was a mess. I just, I was just a mess from start to finish in my <laughs> People are writing, Karen, it was a Karen cut, someone wrote. It was, um, I was about to complain. Oh. Someone wrote Laura, uh, Lauren, uh, uh, Laura models wedding just dresses now. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, she has like a yeah. whole, whole business with meat and farming and all kinds. Of, she had a lot going on. She's still working a yeah. lot. And being oh my a God, that's a... That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share that wasn't in these questions as we wrap up? Um, no, just it was a really great experience. Everyone always asks me, and I think they expect me to say something really bad because a lot of people have so mm -hmm. many bad things to say, but I, I really don't. I had a good time. I knew it was a TV show. I knew what I was getting myself into. It was a lot of fun. I mean, there were definitely some things that I wish were different, more so on the editing side. But for the most mm -hmm. part, it, it was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, some, someone just wrote there that, that as the cycles go on, that, there, that someone just wrote in the comments below that as the cycles go on, I express more disdain for the show. I would like to clear, I, my whole journey, and this, this was years ago now for me, obviously, I did these 18 seasons. I, I was so passionate about it in the beginning. I went in it very wide-eyed and wanting to work really hard. And I, the entire experience as a whole is something that I do love and I do cherish. It's, it was a unique experience to be part of something that became a global phenomenon. I will yes, forever cute. respect Tyra for everything that she represents um, mm -hmm. as, you know, the first black woman on Sports Illustrated, et cetera. I mean, she's so, she's so much for so many young, you know, little brown and black girls and boys mm -hmm. out there. And she should be, I will forever revere and respect her for that. I don't want anybody to mistake kind of what I'm talking about when I spill a little bit of tea here or there about yeah, the show. But the something. show, yeah, there's no malice, there's no hate, there's mm -hmm. no negative energy here. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the, the environment, and I will speak my truth, the environment, and that's, it, it's, it stemmed from many people. It became a very, you know, a not fun environment to work in. It was somewhat of a toxic environment towards the end. Um, and I'm not the only one to say that. You can talk to anyone in production at the time. It became a very uncomfortable place to be behind the scenes. Yeah. But um, I still very much kind of respect the process of it all. And I will not, like, trash it and what have you. Well, so that that's, you like I just want to make it clear, yeah. It's good that you don't, you still have so much respect. You still speak so highly of her and stuff, even though, yeah. you know, things. Took but time. I have to speak my truth too. Look, I'm 47 yeah, years old. I've got to speak my truth. You know what I mean? It's I like, just I remember, can't... speaking of speaking your truth, I totally forgot. This question kept popping up about me getting eliminated and what actually happened because it oh, didn't actually go. make it onto TV. Guys, oh my God. Okay. So I, the day before our photo shoot, um, we had to jump off of a cliff in Hawaii. This cliff, there's signs everywhere that says, don't jump, it's dangerous, there's waves, there's sharp mm -hmm. walks. The lifeboats are way out there because it's too dangerous to get too close. So they tell us, jump off the cliff and pose as you're falling. When you hit the water, swim as fast as you can away to the lifeguard boats. We do this. I jump off the cliff, I hit the water, my ear hits a rock, or I don't really remember what happened, or I just got thrashed around and it was bleeding, it was hurting, it was all jacked up. Next day, we're doing this like underwater shoot and like my ear is still jacked and there's a lot of pressure and like it was just, mm. it was a mess. So there's just a lot of stuff going on. Like they made it sound like I was just complaining like, you got asthma and you can't breathe and blah, blah. I was jacked. <laughs> like it was a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, and I feel, yeah. I feel like that just didn't make it on there obviously because you know, they can't put everything on mm. there. But there was, and it, a lot of that was behind the scenes off camera. But yeah, I, I was not in a good 
position. But I still pushed through. I still did the shoot. And technically, I didn't have the worst photo. You did. Yeah. It was, it was a lot. Just so y'all know, okay? <laughs> there is a lot going on. And that's There's what I'm saying. People watch, people watch the show, and they make their assumptions around the girls and also you know, talent like myself or Nigel, Miss J, Tyra, I mean, they make, there's a lot going on. Because we work seven days a week on that show, as you know. Right? It's not, like we literally work every day. We shoot every day until we're done a cycle. And, and pieces it's, are shown. And then yeah, and pieces are shown. Yeah, and it's exactly. not, it's not, it, it's not an easy, it's not an easy pressure cooker. Ooh. But can I say <laughs> thank you for being a trooper? It is now like what? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Oh my God, <laughs> Sunday. I love you to death for doing this so late. No problem. And as I said, I cannot wait because I am shipping you out a, a yes. copy of my book in advance so you can get it there in Tokyo. Yes, You will I can't be receiving wait. it from me. Thank you so much for Absolutely. being a part of this. And I love that we got to catch up and chat and talk and have fun. And again, I said, I meant everything that I said. Your energy is oh, infectious. So I love it. You need to come in contact with everybody and like <laughs> sprinkle a little of that dust off so on everyone. So sweet. Thanks so much. I'm pretty sure so many people really appreciate you just opening up and just talking about everything that was going on. And I cannot wait for your book. I will definitely be reading that. It's it's literally going in the mail this weekend, so you're gonna get. A I saw time. you packing up your car on like Instagram stories. I was yes, like, I'm pack. Oh, I'm because it's quarantine, so I'm doing it all myself. It's not going out of my publicist's office. So I'm doing everything myself at home. That's so, a lot but of it's fun. So there's <laughs> me, there's me doing everything. So it's a little, it's packed with love. That's how I. Say I was it. gonna say, yeah, more hands on. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All righty. Well, I will talk to you really soon. Okay. Okay. And you, you, you get some rest now. Put your lashes aside. You know, don't sleep in your makeup. Yeah, <laughs> she popped the lash off. I love it. Good there night, you go. guys. Good night, Sunday. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.